You're no saint. You got a free cab, you got a free room, and someone who'll listen to your boring stories. I mean, didn't you, didn't you notice on the plane when you started talking, eventually I started reading the vomit bag? Welcome to Black Irish Podcast. <laughs> there and welcome to an all new episode of black irish podcast with myself brennan mccorkle and mike crawford how you doing sir number 100 we made it buddy we made it can hope you I believe can it, it? i can but... hope I... I know we have an episode where we talk about how old you want to live to yeah i want to live to be 100 why not why so you can re-listen to each episode one day one year at a time one year at a time I don't know how that would make sense mathematically, but, you know, it's good to feel good about stuff. I'm going to live to 100, start listening to the episodes, and then make it to 200. I'll be the first person to live to 200. Oh, that's I mean, Walt Disney might come back, and then I don't even know how you would retroactively do his age. Like, if he's cryogenically frozen, and then you unfreeze him, is he, like, this many years old? Or does he pause how old he was? Yeah, whatever. So, okay, but still, like, let's okay, let's just jump off the jumping point. And if somebody's cryogenically frozen <laughs> in two thousand and twenty, for the sake of math, and then and they're twenty years old, and then in twenty thirty they get unfrozen, are they now going to turn twenty one? Are they going to turn thirty one? Thirty one. They get the year they were frozen, but they were frozen, so their body is only 21 years old. Which, by the way, everybody's doing the math backwards. It's like, I just had my 38th birthday. That I celebrated 38 full years of life. Now I'm in my 39th year of life. And I'll yeah. celebrate getting there on my next birthday. Every birthday you celebrate is the fact that you just finished it and you didn't croak before. That's the celebration. Yeah. That's, and that's how I'm going to start looking at it, too, because then I'll actually start celebrating my birthdays. Yeah. It's like, I one, made it. Not like, hey, year. let's celebrate me being alive. It's like, no, no, no. I made it through another one. All right. Okay, let's party. Now I can. Now that makes more sense to me that way. Because before I couldn't indulge it. I, I hate Did it. someone explain it to you that way recently? No, I just came to that conclusion myself after... 38 full years and about a month of being on this earth. <laughs> that's how long it took me to figure that out. See? And that's why I think if you're cryogenically frozen, it's your brain has only developed 20 years, so then you would just be 21 even though you've skipped time. Because what if time traveling starts to be a thing? Then are but you like, if you skip forward, are you just, are you, you skip forward 100 years, you're 122 years old? That doesn't make sense. I mean, your birthday is still your birthday. So if you were born on this day, then however many years from that day, it's how old you are, how long you've been alive. Like yeah, that. but if you travel to... Okay, so if we were to travel to 2,122, would you be 100... That would be 2,120... No, 2,162. No, 60. What the hell kind of gorilla math was that? How old are you today? How old, How many years have you been on this earth? 38, and you said... 38, okay. 20, 20, so in 100 years, years from now, if you time traveled 100 years forward, would you be yes. 138 or would you be 38 100 years from now? I'd be 138, but you said 122 years forward, so I'd be 160. No, 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 I said... So 2,122 being the year of... Oh, being the calendar. actual year. Okay, so then yeah, yeah. I would be that old. Okay, no. So you would consider yourself, if you just zapped over and your body and everything remained the same, you would consider yourself, you'd be like, I'm celebrating my 138th birthday. Yes. Oh, you trash. Trash, trash, trash. I guess your like, savings account would reflect that. Your 0.01% 
of interest would eventually have done something. (laughs) 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 Invest your money. Oh, all right. Well, speaking of dying, hey, have you seen this make the chili post that's been making the rounds on social media? Okay, well, it started with white chicks, so it'll get to you. (laughs) Um, It's a I I did a little research, did a little digging. It's something that came up from somebody that posted something on a blog like two years ago that came from something from even before that. So it's just a repost of a repost of a repost. But I want to read it really quick because I wanted to see how you feel about it. Okay, so this says, if you don't know, here it is. A good friend of mine unexpectedly lost his wife. A couple months later, we were golfing together, chatting about nothing. He asked what my dinner plans were, and I told him wifey wanted my homemade chili and cornbread, but I didn't feel like stopping at the store. We golfed a few more minutes when he quietly said, make the chili. It took me a few minutes to realize we were no longer talking about dinner. It was about going out of your way to do something for someone you love because at any moment they could unexpectedly be taken away from you. So today I'm sharing with you that wisdom handed to me by my dear friend that I've thought of many times since that day. Next time someone you want or someone you love wants you to go for a walk or watch a football game or play a board game or just put the phone down, give them your undivided attention, just go do it. Quote unquote, make the chili. So... Listen, I get what that says. But this guy's a piece of shit. Right? Who's a piece of shit? Why would you call... So who who you figure is a piece of shit? Okay, hang on. Before we go on my angle, how do you feel about this, this chili post? I mean, it's a cool post, but it's nothing that I've not heard before. Right. It's regurgitated information. Like, hey, just stop, smell the roses, appreciate the people that you love. You should always appreciate the people you love and go out the way for the people that you love. Right. So, that being said, this Neanderthal swinging clubs on the golf course. Okay, he's out for a leisurely game of golf with his buddy. Okay? The least he could do is make some chili for his wife who's holding it down while he's out just having a good time, right? Okay? So here's the thing. Yeah, but but here you go. Now you've created a backstory and a narrative in your mind because you don't know if they have kids, what the house life is like. She exactly. could be out playing golf too. Okay, so okay, so, so, okay, so, here, who's holding it down. so let's take that part out. Chili's easy to make. You just chop stuff up, throw it in, simmer it. Okay. Honestly speaking, I mean, it's your wife. Unless y'all are on bad terms and something's going on at home, if she wants some chili and cornbread, you should happily go home and make some chili and cornbread. But here's the thing. He didn't even say he didn't want to make it. He said he didn't want to go to the store. So it's like, all right, you lazy bones Jones. How about, like, you know the whole you fly all by type of deal or whatever? It's like, hey, you know, if you book it, I'll cook it. You know, like, you go get it. Like, here's the ingredients, honey. You want me to make it? Why don't you go get this stuff? I'll make it when I get home. He did he had no communication from this guy. Yeah. He's just you out on the golf money. course, bitching about his money. wife that likes his cooking. Oh, no. so bad. S- simple answer to that. You have the money to go golfing? Instacart it. It'll be at your front door in a bag waiting for you when you walk in it. It's a couple more bucks, bro. But look, clearly you ain't wanting for money. Stop being lazy. You stop being lazy, people. It's easy. It's real easy answers. To well, you. here's the thing. Not only is this guy a terrible husband. He's an awful friend. Like, this guy's wife just died. He doesn't even invite him over to dinner. When was the last time this guy had a home-cooked meal? His wife is dead. The last time it was the body was warm, he had a warm meal in front of him. Like, come on, give this guy a break, invite him over. This guy's just bitching about his wife, his warm-bodied wife at home that loves his cooking and can't wait for him to come home. This guy's just like, ugh, my stupid life while I'm out golfing with you. Yeah, how's your uh, how's your dead thing going? Well, I think I missed that part of the conversation because with that added context, it's even more fucked up. How good know. is this guy's chili? I don't know, but it's fucked up to the fact this man just lost his wife and you're complaining about not wanting to stop to get some shit to make your <laughs> wife chili. And he would, guess what? He would you have to go to back to Taco wife. Bell tonight, Tom. 
You're eating by yourself, buddy. Go have your diarrhea at home. Yeah, <laughs> kind of a fucked up story. Yeah. So speaking of food, how was your Thanksgiving? Pretty good, man. Nice and chill. How about yourself? It was good. Pretty chill. Same, same. Did I just uh, kind of started with football in the morning, which was nice. Did you do the same thing? But you get it in the afternoon. I started in with football, man. That's it. That's yeah. It See, football. but I, the beautiful thing about the West Coast, you know this, is on, like, holidays, when all these games start at 10, 11 noon, we get them at, like, 7, nine 8, in 9 in the morning. So we got... <laughs> NFL football at 9.30, which was, it's only a half-hour jump, but that's a big deal, a half-hour jump. You don't have to wait that extra time, and, you know, there's no church on Thursday for Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's it's a day of uh, taking over, not a day of <laughs> saying thanks to the Lord, saying thanks to each other. Hey, we did good here. We took over. Good job. Good job. Uh, <laughs> but, dude, I straight up feasted for like 24 hours like i didn't start until late but then i went i went pretty hard how about yourself yeah yeah no no i ate pretty good and plus i had put more than enough food way more too much food up over here so yeah man it was a good time man man i love the days off what's your favorite thing to eat at thanksgiving what was the favorite your favorite thing that you had Favorite thing to eat at Thanksgiving? I don't know, man. Fat pie. I don't know. I'm fat now, man. What kind of pie did you eat? Sweet potato pie. What else is there? What do you mean? What else is there? I didn't even know that was a thing for like a standard for Thanksgiving. I thought it was Uh, an option. Nah, ain't no option. That's it. That's the option. Sweet potato pie is the option. Okay. See, because we we do like sweet potato casserole, and then so we don't do. We don't have sweet potato pie. But I started kind of like we were watching football and I was kind of getting antsy because it was like we weren't going over to eat until like we weren't showing up to like two. So I'm just kind of like dancing mm-hmm. around, like making regular <laughs> lunch on Thanksgiving is so boring. So it was like, eh, I think I'm going to throw some cookies in the oven. So I like made some. You eat lunch on Thanksgiving Day? Well, the kids. I had to make it for the kids. Oh, yeah. So while I was making just regular lunch for them, I'm like, ah, I got to make something. So uh, I eat breakfast usually. I made some cookies. Just, they didn't turn out well. Again, our time is different because last time football is starting here. So, yeah. Exactly. I mean, the timing is way off. Yeah, it's football and breakfast. Or not even, we're done with breakfast for a while when football starts. So then I kind of like mm-hmm. had a couple cookies, nothing, then went over, had some appetizers, and then... Loaded up like one plate, like one plate full to the brim, all the stuff, two different kinds of rolls, like making my sandwich, you know, little sandwich as I go or just taking bites of individual things. Good stuff. Now, I I posted something on somewhere, I don't remember what it was, about putting peas in the mashed potatoes. Have you ever heard of this? No, I don't even eat peas. So. Oh, yeah, it's a green food. I forgot about that. Well, I just, it's like a textural thing. It's like, I mean, the way I grew up eating it, it was mint peas. So it was like butter and salt and fresh mint. Really good. And then you throw that in like some really good homemade whipped mashed potatoes. And it's just like bomb dizzle. It's like, it's like gravy I think that's boba one of those cultural almost. Things. Yeah, white. <laughs> That's white on type of white. And I even threw in mints like it was classy. Oh. But we did not have any mint peas or whatever. I did have two different pieces of pie, and I don't normally eat pie. I'm not a pie guy, but I think I may have been swayed a little bit. Because I love a good pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie has always been my jam. And pumpkin pie and whipped cream. So I had pumpkin pie, whipped cream, and then I had fresh homemade apple pie with vanilla ice cream on top, all the mode. So that was pretty bomb. I didn't have any of the pecan pie because uh, three pieces was too much for me there. <laughs> but then I came home and I was like, well, I mean, 
if we're feasting, we're feasting. So I put the kids to bed because they're, you know, they're bonkers tired. Kids go to bed. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'm still going to stay up and watch like planes, trains, and automobiles or something. So planes, trains, and automobiles. What a show. <laughs> Have you ever seen it? One time. Oh. Not very often. It's, yeah. not, it's not my jam. Not my jam, bro. It's good. It has that little dark turn at the end, but it's it's fantastic. Steve Martin, John Candy. So while I was like, okay, I don't want to go too hard. But I do still want dessert, so what do I got to do? So I have, we have chocolate chip waffles, like the frozen Eggo waffles. So I threw some of those in the toaster, and I made some waffle sandwiches mm-hmm. where I just take one waffle, I put a bunch of butter on it, and then I take another waffle and put it on top, and I fold it in half, and I just eat it. So it's kind of like four layers of waffle, chocolate chip waffle, and two layers of butter in each bite. So I had like three of those waffle butter sandwiches. And then I was like, damn it. It's so delicious. So delicious. It's butter and chocolate and carbs. So good. (laughs) And then, and none of that sticky syrup. And then, so I was like, all right, I'm going to go run through this box of 24 waffles. I can't do that (laughs) to the kids. So I was like, all right, let me just go. Let me just bite the bullet. I'm going to go to the store and get some ice cream. So after Thanksgiving and all of this madness, I went to the store and got a couple of pints of ice cream. And then I had one scoop of one because I wanted to try it to see if I wanted to eat that one. Turns out I didn't. And I got two flavors at the store because I wasn't sure. So I put that back in the freezer (laughs) and then ate one. And then the next morning I was like, well... I haven't taken a shit yet from last night, so let me just round this out, and I'll just pile on that that last pint of ice cream, and then it'll all go out together. So it was kind of like a win-win the next morning. So then that was like, okay, my 24 hours is done. I think maybe I had a bowl of cereal after that, and then I was like, okay, now (laughs) now it's done. Now it's done? And then I've eh, I've been tailing it off since then. Not perfect. None of us are. No, I know. And like my (laughs) my four year old was running around like a dirty little chipmunk, and like on Thanksgiving, because like there's a bowl of nuts, and he loves cashews and peanuts, so he was running around, but he kept dropping them because he's got them in his hand. He's four, so he keeps dropping them and like just hiding behind stuff and like eating them like a dirty little chipmunk, picking them up off the floor. (laughs) Like, dude. Five second rule. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, I had a right dilemma now with COVID and everything. No more five second rule. Okay, well let me ask you this: What do I do in this situation? Okay, I was in the shower and I dropped the soap. You're in the shower at your house. You pick it up. Who are you talking about? I had just peed. What does that mean? What do you mean? What does that mean? I was standing in the shower. I peed on the floor as I was finishing peeing because I can multitask. I wash up while my downstairs does its thing. While I was finishing peeing, I dropped the soap. So it got in the piss slash water on the floor headed to the drain. What's protocol there? You pick the soap up and wash it off and you keep going about your shower. Yeah, like, but like, know. how long do I rinse it off? Like, how long did long. R. It's Kelly soap. girls have to rinse off before they were clean? All she did was use soap to wash the pee off. So if you are... Yeah, but do I, soap, like, how long do I... Rin- I can't just directly apply it back to my body and then be like, okay, we're good. But like... Yes, t- people use piss on their, like, piss on their feet to kill athletes. Oh, I've like, done that for sure. Of- I used so, to use tough actin, tenactin, and lotrimin. I don't remember. Something. And then it was like I started pissing on my feet in the shower. I was like, yeah, that worked. Okay, good. <laughs> that was also when I was like 10 and had hand-me-down shoes and shit like that. Not hand-me-down shoes, but one pair of shoes for the whole year. It's going to get funky when you're a 10-year-old boy. You know what I mean? Sure. All I'm right, sure. so so you're fine with that. Okay. Is our by the way is R Kelly forever 
gonna be the P guy? Like, has is he? Yeah. Like nobody else is gonna be the P guy. Like he's number one, the OG. Nobody's gonna he's dethrone him, P right? Guy. What would you have Never. to do to dethrone R. Kelly as the piss man? You would. You can't dethrone R. Kelly as the piss. Would you have to have a piss, piss fountain party where you stood on the rooftop of a mansion and just <laughs> yeah. had tons of people below you? And all you did was just drink water and piss all day he on He was pissing on kids. At... <sighs> he was pissing on kids. Yeah. As when you kid. say it, it makes it so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, so does that mean that, like, anybody that pisses their pants in school gets, like, a freebie now? It's, like, a one-off? Like, okay. We're not going to make fun of you. At least you didn't get pissed on. Oh, don't worry. I had a little girl that pooped her pants every day. Pee is nothing. Ooh. Did you ever <laughs> pee your pants day, in school? I mean, no. No? You say that like it. Um, all right. Well, I did in kindergarten. I peed my pants. In kindergarten, I was probably... I'm Seven? Probably would have peed my pants. <laughs> we had... We had a Fuck in, you. I like that joke. And <laughs> <we had laughs> Nothing. Go. Bathroom. We had an in-classroom bathroom, so you can go as you put it. You ain't no peeing on yourself. Oh, I don't know. I just remember that I peed myself in kindergarten. And, by the way, I only did it, I think, the one time because I was so embarrassed. Because the way that they had the fix was you just sit outside in the sun at recess and everybody can see your little pee pants trying to dry. You just got (laughs) to sit there. I sat there like I was suntanning my crotch and just had to, like... Anybody would come up. It was like in timeout, but other kids could come up and talk to me. It was pretty brutal. I'm like, all right, I think I'm done with this whole no. pissing your pants thing, buddy. But when I worked with kids, I had a kid go to the top of the monkey bar structure that we had, like, and pee down on everybody beneath them. <laughs> That's the king of the castle. Yo, know, that was some funny shit. Like, you don't fuck with that kid, right? No. He was, yeah, he was really one of those, too. <laughs> I have a buddy who's a teacher uh, where I grew up in, in Palm Castor, Tucky. And uh, he's, he's teaching for fifth grade, I think. And one of his kids stabbed another kid in the face with a pencil, like, repeatedly. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> How do you, do you get in the middle of that? <laughs> no, he's to just like, him. I had to stand from the side and be like, hey, stop. He's like, I'm not getting stabbed <laughs> by this crazy child. <laughs> and they didn't kick him out of school. That's how wild school is out there. It's crazy no, everywhere, that, but that's just one of those stories where I caught it firsthand. And it's just like, I don't know why my child. They, would, they wouldn't have to kick him out of school, though. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, he'd be gone. He'd, he'd just be gone. <laughs> yeah. somebody, he'd be gone. Would nobody, would nobody somebody take care him of him. Everybody's got an older brother. And if you don't, you got a cousin. And if you don't, somebody will pretend they're your brother. That was how it always was growing up. Everybody had a, an older somebody you had to watch out for. Oh. Well, moving on to sports. Don't watch out for us. We shit the bed last week. I went two and three. You went one and five because I didn't technically want to pick that Notre Dame game. Um, But you said Vanderbilt was a lock against Tennessee, which we have to address because Tennessee ran Ran. them off the field. Let me tell you about that. So there was a dude. I don't know if you're on like Bleacher. No. Oh, but I follow like on Bleacher the app. Whatever, fuck them. Okay, uh, that but, seems but rude yeah, if you follow their, them. You can give them a shout out. Use, it's cool. I mean, I use their app. Whatever, but everybody uses their app. I mean, it's a popular app. But anyway, there's a dude on the betting section that had Bandy last part of his parlay for like a hundred and ten thousand, and they were offering like cash out for eleven grand. And for two days, he didn't take the cash out. But, like, on Saturday before the game, he took it. And they got washed. Yeah, they got waxed. <laughs> they got waxed. So, now Tennessee's ranked number seven. Do you feel like that's accurate, even though Hooker's out? No, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. Okay. This is bull- the college football playoff is bullshit because they should be in front of Bama. They beat Bama on the field. Like yeah. They beat Bama. So, you think they should be six, Bama should be seven? 
Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. Well, one of those top four college football playoff teams, USC, that game, that was tough. That was a tough game, Notre Dame, USC. Yeah. But I actually, I was fortunate enough to go. Shout out to my uncle Dan and the maestro, my dad. Uh, my uncle gave my dad two tickets. And I had just, my dad reached out, maestro reached out, and he's like, hey, man, you want to go? And I was like, yeah, of course I want to go. I was looking at tickets this morning, and this was Friday or thanksgiving or something i don't remember Mm -hmm. and so we got we're like all right let's touch base you know friday we'll talk about how we're gonna get there or whatever so we're talking friday night and he was like hey man have you missed any of these since we started going and i was like oh because notre dame and usc play each other every year and they take turns playing in los angeles and in south bend so The year I graduated high school, my mom's uncle was going to the game and we ended up some, I forget how they got it together, but all I know is my mom's uncle and his son and my dad and I went to the game and I don't know if anybody else went, but I know that the four of us were the core people that went. So that was 2002. And since then, every other year, every even year, I've gone to Notre Dame, USC. Somehow I've ended up at that game, whether it was me buying the tickets, somebody else buying the tickets, me getting them through my wife's work or whatever, like her getting seats. Like, However, I acquired these tickets, except for there's one time my, well, for the COVID year, the 2020 doesn't count, I guess. And then when I turned 30, uh, we went to South Bend to see the Louisville game. So I still have seen Notre Dame in, you know, for the last 20 years, at least 10 times. But I didn't realize until we were having the conversation that this is something I may have to try and continue this tradition that I didn't realize I was even doing. (laughs) It's a good excuse to go to a Notre Dame game every other year. At your favorite stadium, why not? It's not in my favorite. Why? No, I don't like the Coliseum. (laughs) I mean, it's... Iconic, I'll say that. I don't have much else to say about it. They did do a lot of icon. renovations, though. I will say, they did. Like there's, so you should love it there. It's iconic. You're an icon. Uh, Match made in heaven. Uh, maybe if I perform at the Coliseum, then it'll be a match made in heaven. But until that oh, day no, comes, no. Uh, I don't know about that. Unless they bring it back, have what if we were. Okay, would you be a part of the torch lighting ceremony if you were offered it for the Olympics? The what? The torch lighting no. ceremony? No, they walk way too far. Wow. Do you root for the United what? States in the Olympics? Yeah. Who in the hell else would I root for, Brent? I don't know if you even care about the Olympics or if you did who you would root for. If you're like, yes, listen, I man. care about track and field and the sports that we play in America, basketball. Okay. Um, and like tennis, I want America to win, but we never win that shit. Um, basketball, we always win men and women and like hockey, but the rest of and track and field. But I ain't you like, don't care about the rest. What's that like? The shuttle putt or like polo, like. Yeah, nobody watches that garbage. Well, I mean, because, like, listen, in the Winter Olympics, I always root for the Swiss in, like, but the if we, ski. if we get somebody famous like Ledecky or your boy, uh, you know what I'm saying, and they're swimmers, then I'll watch that shit, too. Like, it's hyped up. I'll watch it. Yeah. Baseball. That's track and field adjacent. Swimming. That's track and field adjacent. <laughs> it's swimming. Yeah, it's the water <laughs> portion. It's the what? It's the water portion of escaping. <laughs> Track, field. You gotta you gotta run fast. You gotta throw stuff and jump over obstacles. And sometimes you gotta swim to get away from your. Well, we predators. got a, good, a couple of Americans coming up in track, so I'm definitely gonna be watching. Cause Noah Lowry went to TC, so which they now call Alexandria City Public School because I guess TC was some type of total racist. So they changed my high school name. Here Total Chump Williams. Name. That's that's his name. <laughs> Do they have to retroactively yeah. change Remember the Titans now? No, no, no. It's still TC Williams. Remember the Dude, Titans. they were playing that at the gym yesterday 
in the little T C Williams to me. Cardio room. I love it. Even though I was in your city now. But yeah, what were we talking about that made me even get on my high school? Lots of stuff. Uh, (laughs) Me going to Notre Dame, USC, and all that kind of stuff. So that being said, USC is in the Pac-12 championship. So last week, I went 2-3. and Mike went 1-5. and Uh, That was awful. Okay. Let's come with some legitimate picks here in the championship weekend. Okay. This this is is where... 5-0 and week. All right. Oh, well, however many games you go. Well, I'm then we better pick the same here. Let's see. Let's talk through yeah. it. All right. All right. So, Pac-12 championship is Friday. We have number 11, Utah, versus number 4, USC in a rematch. USC is favored by two and a half points. Who do you like Three in this Three points, game? USC covers. And we're starting off on a bad foot because I think Utah has got their goat. Utah is going to get them twice. You think Utah is going to get them twice? I think Cam Rising does it again. No. I think USC covers. It's a I neutral field. <laughs> Had it been a, a home game for USC as it's as it looks, okay, no, but this is in Las Vegas. Utah. I'm telling you. I, I I disagree. All right? So. Yeah, but I'm just saying. I was just, I, It's okay that you disagree, but I wanted you to understand that the last time they won by – one point was in Utah. Yes. Neutral site, which is probably going to be more USC sided because USC and Utah popularity wise and people that's going to buy tickets. Uh, yeah, yeah, LA, USC Las fans. Vegas. Yeah. It's going to be USC uh-huh. heavy. Yeah. And they're going to, they're definitely covering the two points. They're, they're winning by at least three points. So but here's the that, thing the thing that's important about USC and the home game and stuff is USC, they travel well no matter what. Okay. But here's the deal. Yeah. They don't get to decide how long the grass is and the conditions of the field and all this kind of stuff. And that's a big deal when you're talking about trying to even out those types of athletes. So I just think that Caleb Williams isn't better than Cam Rising. Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in the college world right now. No. What are you talking about? See, this is right here. This is just the talk of a Notre Dame fan. I forget that he, sometimes it slips my mind that he's a actual Notre Dame fan. He's not, he's not just a guy who Dude, likes Notre Dame. Dude, they he's had Caleb fan. Williams, like, because Maestro <laughs> loves looking at all the memorabilia stuff, and it's like they have, like, a signed O.J. Simpson helmet that's like five hundred and seventy-five dollars, and then a signed Caleb Williams helmet that's like five hundred and fifty. Like, that's how much the, the like value this dude has. But you can't go into a game and not talk shit about this guy if you, you think they're gonna shit. lose. I think You're he's gonna Dame. shit the bed. I don't he's think he's gonna, gonna shit the bed. Day. I just think Utah's gonna win. No, did you see his fingernail paint versus you all? Said fork Notre Dame. <laughs> See, he's a child. He's a child. No, his mom, no, his mom has a thing in nail pain business, so that's why he wears. And a dirty mouth, apparently. She is not a lady. I said it. <laughs> All right, so it's we disagree okay. on the Pac-12 championship. Let's go to the Big 12 championship, where we have number ten Kansas State again. Kansas State just moving on up. The Jeffersons. Versus number three, TCU. TCU is favored by their famous two and a half points. Everybody who knows me knows that I'm, I want TCU to make this. Yeah, I want TCU frog, going to field. But are they going to cover? But I think this game is going to be close. I think it's going to be a tight game. I really hope they don't lose. So I'm going to say they win and they cover. I'm yeah. going TCU to cover the three. Now and I hope only because we have opposite picks on every one because I'm sticking with my theory. TCU maybe wins, maybe doesn't, but either way it's close. Give me the points against TCU. I'll take Kansas State. But I also know one of these teams are going to lose. One of these four teams are going to lose because that's just what happens. That's how it goes. Yes. True, true, true. So in the SEC championship, we have number 14 LSU versus number one Georgia. Georgia's given up 17 and a half points. Give me, give me the points. Give You're me taking the, Brian me, Kelly. 
And the Tigers, buddy. And the Tigers. The yeah, that's a lot of points. Can... I think Georgia that's rolls. That's a lot of points. Yeah. SEC, yeah. Like SEC championship game. I think like it's a two-score victory for Georgia. But that's, you know, again, 10, 13, 14. Like, it's a two-score victory for Georgia. I don't think they get to the three-score. Unless there's something. Here's the thing about these fucking SEC teams. Is they have such crazy good athletes that when you have these weird, stupid plays at the end of the game where, you know, there's no chance of winning, but there's a college kid just trying to pad the stats and get a little bit extra, or like maybe we'll get one more score and they throw it or fumble Ruski or something weird. And then like a D lineman will pick up the ball and run it in for a touchdown because he can run a four five. You know, it's like, <laughs> ah, that tips the scales sometimes at the end of the game. It's like, I don't know why, but SEC games, you could be up by 10, needing to cover 7, going into, you know, having the ball with a minute left, and it's like, well, I got to watch this thing through. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen here. (laughs) It just seems like SEC games are wild at the finish. Wild, bro. So, I don't trust a three-score game. I'll take, unless it's some weird, weird, weird turnover play. Um or it's like everybody sells out on like a first and 10 when you know they're running the ball and the guy squirts through and runs for 80 and you're like, hey, not one guy was back there. <laughs> like Josh Jacobs the other day for yeah. that game. Hey. Fucking fantasy points. Dunk on. All right, so that game we agree on. Uh, the American Athletic championship game use number 22 UCF versus number 18 Tulane Tulane has given up four points I'm back on the Tulane train fuck them give me UCF UCF with the points in their hot quarterback baby that's the thing that worries me but I went against Tulane and it bit me in the ass so now I'm going I'm putting my faith back in Mm -hmm. all right maybe that's maybe that's the one Maybe that's the one that flips because it's only four points. Uh, the Big Ten championship Watch. game, Purdue unranked versus number two, Michigan. The spread is 17 points. Give me those. I'm giving me Michigan. I'm covering those. Yeah, how much did they just beat Ohio State by? Yeah, uh, they're going like to 23. S- yeah, well, here's the thing about Michigan. I'm going to bet Michigan minus, I don't care if it's 17, for the first half. Because here's what they do. They blow out. They'll be up by 40 points at halftime, and then they'll win by, like, 43 points. And you're like, huh? I get it, but what? Where did your athletes go? So, I I mean, I agree. I'm going to take Michigan minus the 17. I'd take Michigan minus 22, to be honest. Um. And here's the game that and makes here's you the money game this weekend. The ACC championship game. It's number nine Clemson, who everybody's been like dogging all year, waiting for him to suck, and they kind of do, but they kind of don't. And it's really tough. Uh, versus number twenty-three, North Carolina, and North Carolina is getting seven and a half points. So what do we do here, Mike? Oh, this is the game where you make your money. Go get it now. Go catch the money now. It's plus seven and a half. Because by Saturday, this will not be plus seven and a half, my friend. What will it be? Let me just tell you that. It'll be at least six. Because they're going against the best quarterback in college football. Well, you can't. You just, said Caleb, you just said the UCF guy was the hottest, and then Caleb Williams is the best. No, UCF guy is the hottest. Caleb Williams shouldn't be playing college football. only reason why he's still in college is because of his age. Two years from now, the Heisman winner plays for U- UNC, baby. Drake, May, and they're going to beat Clemson on Saturday. All right. I was hoping you were going to say that, but then again, your heartstrings are tied to it. So, um, Give me the points anyway, though, but they're going to win. Clemson's going to wax them. Yeah, you're smoking. Clemson's going to wax them. <laughs> May's going to be on his back a lot. As long as DJ Ungalale is their quarterback, they ain't waxing nobody. That boy is – and he, I watched him in high school. He was so good. I don't know what happened. 
No oh, yeah. He's it mediocre at best. Mediocre is being nice. All right, well, that's why I said at best. That's his ceiling, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> and he, he had all the, like, memorables. And in college, he took over for, like, one of the best teams. Yeah. Shout out to St. John uh, Bosco. So speaking of Clemson athletes taking over, Deshaun Watson is back. Deshaun's back. Deshaun returns. Did you hear what's happening to Deshaun? What is happening to Deshaun? That his accusers want to go to the game, bro? Yeah, so I did see something that, like, out of the 20-something people, like, I guess 10 of them have said that they plan to go, whether they do or not, I don't know, because... So, hear me out. Hear me out, right? (laughs) Are people allowed to come harass you at your job? If they pay... If your job allows people to pay to watch you do it, then yeah. It's part of the game. I'm not allowed... I'm not... I'm not... You can't come to my job and get harassed, regardless. Like, he's at work, bro. They should not But here's the thing. If they just got paid for saying he harassed them, and then they're now allowed to do exactly that same thing. Whoa, whoa, them. whoa. They haven't done anything yet, Mike. What? They haven't done anything if, yet. But no one's going to stop them, so they're actually being but allowed here's to the do thing. it if they if, choose to. If they act inappropriately, if they start yelling some heinous shit, they need to be well, they removed. Signs like, he raped me. Then you, you know need to get or them he, out of there because they're children at me, football games, didn't. and you can't have people... Having to they explain to their children what rape is while they're they attending a football game. Let me correct myself. They were never rape charged for. I know, but if you, somebody he, yells he that he at a football me. game. He sexually assaulted me. Will that's on the sign. Oh, oh, they're bringing signs? Yeah, what were their signs? Be. I mean, you can bring signs to NFL games. So Deshaun grabbed my tight end. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny because they... they well, there's nothing been proven that they two points doesn't feel them. like safety. They just they just end up getting money. He so, gave me um, two fingers. But yeah, that's that's a crazy situation. That if I was the Browns, I wouldn't let him in. Oh, interesting. I wouldn't let him. I wouldn't let him come to the game. I mean, yeah, you can't really do that. And I would, I would say, if I was the Browns, you can't really do what I would. That if somebody pays for a ticket, that they can't come to the game. But what I would say, if I was the Browns, they put people out of games all the time. I know. Hear me out, so, Michael. I if so I was the Browns, I would have specific security for these people, like you know, two or three of your higher end rent a cops, and just be like, listen, bird dog these people. And if they do anything or get out of line, go ahead and kick them out. If you own the company, right? Yes. Right? And your highest paid employee told you that someone was harassing him at the job. Would you let those people come harass him at the office? See, but here's the thing. They may make him uncomfortable. What if they are doing like a quiet sit-in type thing where they're just like, listen, we know the cameras are going to come over to us. We're just going to sit here. And they don't do that's, shit. That's not that's not the question. The question is as someone I know, but that's as the my people question. who own the company. As the people who own See, the company, would you allow them to come make your highest earner uncomfortable while he did his job? So that he could not be the best at his job, which you're paying him to do. It depends. Would because you, here's, would you here's allow that? the thing. Here's the thing about somebody like Deshaun Watson. Because there's a part of my brain, I think it's over here, that thinks the same way that I think he might share this thought pattern. And that is, let him sit in the seats. I'm going to blow this shit up right in their fucking faces and show them it doesn't bother me a bit. I get that. I get that. So maybe it doesn't bug him and he's just like, fucking let him come. I don't give a shit. It probably doesn't bug him. And here's the the thing. They're playing in Houston. He can't say shit. Oh, that's okay. So that's why they – because if it was in Cleveland, he, they wouldn't get in the game. I guarantee you, as the owners of the Cleveland Browns, who paid Deshaun Washington to play You don't football, think the NFL had this thing all laid out, and they're like, oh, in Houston? it Like, everything is built so that this is going to be the highest-watched game of the week, at least oh, okay. for periods. period. Dude, the first five minutes of the Cleveland Texans game 
is going to be... Nobody would have ever thought that Cleveland Browns playing the Houston Texans would be must-see TV. But the first five minutes of that game, people can't wait to see Deshaun with the ball on his first two drives. They want to see what he looks like if he's fluttery on the first one, and they want to see if he could do it again on the second or if the first drive was a fluke, regardless of how it goes. And then after that, people are going to switch back to red zone. (laughs) <laughs> oh, don't worry. Red but Red Zone's going to be having that as like a double box the entire time. It's always going to be on the screen, too. That's the thing that I'm saying. It's like it's must-see TV, and they did it for a reason. They are smart manipulators, but that's okay. But I wonder if Deshaun Watson has the same pickup line as me. Touchdown, my pants. Because that's who you're facing this week, buddy. I'm your fantasy football nightmare, bitch. My fantasy football team has been stinking the last couple of weeks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking shit. Fucking shit show we got going on. Yeah. You're dropping out, son. Your time is running out. Have you paid up your fantasy it. bets, or are you going to go deeper in the hole this week after I womp a Mud hole don't in your ass. On, we, don't, we don't have any bet on this game. No, you because you can't video. pay me on the other stuff. I know that the ear thing is on me. Have you sh- shaved all the way, doubled down, and done your thing? No, yeah, I see that you went to the barber. Show. Yeah, you'll get the video later today. We're just recording early, buddy. Don't worry. Oh, it's coming today? Yeah. Okay, if it doesn't... Co- if I don't understand that this recording is going to be like... If you don't shave all the way and bring this to episode 101, then you should have to pay a penalty of, like, shave your eyebrows or... We've already made a bet on a penalty if it's not paid by the season. Which is what? By, forget, you got to remember. No, that. you. that's the thing, is your consequence was by the first time we played, if you didn't pay up, no, you couldn't wasn't. change this your name. No, after the first time we played. We we made a different bet. I forget what it was. I don't know. I'm just but saying maybe you have to do like a Tay Diggs. Up. Who the fuck is Tay Diggs? Oh, yeah. that Tay Diggs is the actor. Oh, yeah. God. Like you gotta you gotta just only have eyebrows. I'm already don't worry. Yeah. I, that's I'm already that's, that's what it should be. You either have to shave your eyebrows or you can only have eyebrows. You have to have a deadline and a consequence. This has gone on far too long. Kind of like your pubes. <laughs> All right, buddy. You're running out of time. I'll give you till next week. And next week, if you don't have this to the table, we are going to solidify a deadline and a punishment. And I'll figure out a way to make you do it, damn it. Understood, my friend. Okay. Okay. I hope that you're casual because you're so confident in yourself and not because you're blowing me off. I'm always confident in myself. I know. That's what scares me. I don't have to get loud. I know you don't have to get loud. You have to get naked and shave. (laughs) It's not a big deal. Well, I I know it's not a big deal, but it seems to Deshaun become... Watson is on. You have Deshaun Watson on your fantasy team. Yeah, he's gonna womp your ass too. He's gonna help me womp your ass. I have him in a couple leagues also. He'll help you there. He's gonna go win. out on fire this week. I gotta win in two of my leagues this week to make sure I secure my playoff spot. Uh, I got mine, so I'm good in all of my leagues. I think I got mine. So in all three, but in ours, the one I care about the most, I just need that buy. So I'm working towards that. In second, I got to get over you and then make sure I'm secure. If I get over you, then I'm in the clear, I think. I got to get I got to get a win versus you because I got to get back in this. No, you're going to be scratching and clawing that six spot with like three other people come the last week of the season here, regular season fantasy football. Now I gotta get this win this week, baby. I gotta go tweak my lineup, make it perfection. I looked at your perfection. lineup. Go ahead. Doesn't really matter. Give me your best shot, buddy. I hope you do. I hope Point you get it closer than it probably is gonna be. Point perfection and I'll win. Don't worry. Just that way Watch I can out. break away from you at the last minute and you just be like, oh damn it. 
It's always Stevenson or Pierce. Stevenson or Pierce. Stevenson yeah, or I'm Pierce. telling you, know. you could have you could have an extra running back this week, and it wouldn't matter. That's no, what I'm no, telling. Now you. that you're talking, see, I was trying to be relaxed and humble. Now you're talking shit, and now I'm gonna wax your ass. Oh, uh, I'm gonna make sure. Like when? When was the last time you ever beat me in anything? Last time doesn't matter. If I beat you this time, is all that matters. Yeah. Well. Have you ever Hi. beat me? I've definitely beat you. At what? What I beat you in fantasy. I don't know exactly. What How many years ago? Year. I don't know, but to, <laughs> to all that matters. You know, kind of that 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 says a lot. That's very telling, Michael. Right, well, well, guess what? All what none of that matters. We have the game to play on Sunday. So yeah, that's the, right. What happened in the uh, past? No. Oh, and guess matters, what? So. I get to start this ass whooping starting. The day this comes out, because uh, my boys start on Thursday, which I'm actually Ooh. not super confident about. I might have to do a little, little swippy swap, um, but I'll I'll manage that myself here. Oh, all right, well, all right, Mister. Have you had taken any time off of sports for like some leisurely bedtime? TV? No, 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 man. I've been going through. I've had a lot of shit going on. I haven't been watching anything. On Nothing. Not even really sports. I haven't been betting. I have been shit at work and other shit going on. My yeah. goodness. Well, I've been, you know what I started dipping back into, which is just kind of, I actually am like, I don't know how far back in I want to go, but I just needed a quick little something and I threw on a Chappelle show. I was like, good God, I forgot how good this is. Because it's probably been, I don't know, a decade since I've watched a Chappelle show. Like I've seen clips here and there. Just because I want, I'm like, oh man, I remember this, I remember that. Let me go watch Black Bush or something like this. But uh, it was good. But I can't, I get sucked in too easy because it's so good. And then I'm like, oh man, what was the next one? Oh man, what was the next one? So I got to kind of temper myself with that. But I did, I am tempering myself into the uh, holiday themed viewing. Do you ever watch any type of holiday or Christmas movies or trouble? Anything of that nature? I watched, the, I watched the movie where his tongue gets stuck to the pole. I don't know why I can't think of it right now. A Christmas story. So let me ask you that. Okay, so let's do our top five like holiday movies. But when I say holiday, let me open it up for you a little bit because I know that you're not super specific about this particular genre of like Christmas. Either a holiday movie, Christmas movie, or a movie that you watch around the holidays or something like that. You know, like some people throw Die Hard in the mix of a Christmas movie. It's not a Christmas movie. It takes place at Christmas and... Which kind of makes it a Christmas movie. Which kind of... Yeah, sure. It's Christmas adjacent. But it's it's a holiday type theme movie or it's a good excuse to watch it around Christmas. So Die Hard would be... 100% 100% acceptable in this realm. You know what I mean? Yeah, but who wants it that hard? That's why. Soul Food. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. That, that give you that holiday feel, man. Family together. Christmas time. Um, a Christmas Story. You always got to watch Christmas Story. Um, damn, what movie were you just talking about? Something made me think of something. You were talking about something that you think of something else. I fucking forgot. I was talking about Die Hard, Christmas, Holiday. No, no, no. Uh, I don't know. I was thinking about a different fucking Christmas movie. Any movies that take place in winter? No, I had a Christmas movie on my um, mind and I can't think of it now. But, uh, damn. I don't know. But All right, let me run Christmas through. Movie is this Christmas. Cause that's my shit. Shout out to Chris Breezy. Bow. This Christmas, have I seen? When did that come out? I don't know, like oh five maybe. Okay. It's been a while. Uh, I think I've seen it, but I'll have to revisit that. Okay, so you got Soul no, Food, man. A Christmas Story, This Christmas. I have another one. I just it was on my tongue and I couldn't think of it, and now I forgot. I smoke weed and that shit just happens. All right. Well, let me run through. So you're you have three. I'll run through my five and some honorable mentions, and then maybe it'll pop in your head. 
stop me. Feel free to stop me as I ramble. Um, so every year, uh, Elf is in the mix. It's it's like you gotta. I I'll watch it one time through, and then if it's ever on, like it's always on like different regular cable channels. So sometimes I'll background it, and that'll be on the TV anyway. Elf is always a good one. I'm a Muppet guy. And I also like the story of A Christmas Carol. So I watch A Muppet Christmas Carol every year. That's the version that I like. A Muppet Christmas Carol. Uh, I watch It's a Wonderful Life every year. Again, that's kind of like Die Hard. It's like, it's Christmas adjacent. Because it's kind of like there's some parts that are around. Home Alone, that's what I was thinking. Home Alone, there it is. Home Alone is on my honorable mentions list because Home Alone is kind of a Christmas movie. They're traveling for Christmas. Everything's based around the Christmas holiday, people going out of town. So that one is more of the... the, How is it kind of a Christmas movie? Home Alone is literally a Christmas movie. It's literally the Christmas holiday. He was home alone for the Christmas holiday. Yes, exactly. definitely a Christmas movie. No, I know. I get it. But it's more of a, you know, like burglary, heisty, whatever. Yeah. Home Alone, exactly. I'm agreeing with you. I don't know why I'm talking myself out of it. Uh, I always watch Christmas Vacation every single year. And I usually do it while I'm wrapping the kids' presents because it seems apropos. Like if I start to get upset, I'm just like, oh yeah, Christmas Vacation. (laughs) Because the Griswolds are the best, even though Chevy Chase is a dick. And Scrooge is also on... My favorites for Christmas Scrooge. with Bill Murray. Scrooge is so fucking funny. I don't think I've ever seen it. You would appreciate it. And there's not many that I would say kind of cross the Venn diagram of our movies kind of cross over. But the ones that do are pretty like, you know, like coming to America. Like that's. Just both uh, both of our alleys at the same exact fucking time. You know what I mean? Coming to America. Scrooged, I think, since you kind of like Christmas movies, but you're very specific about, like, meh, th- this one would be right up your alley. It's good. Okay. Honorable mentions, Home Alone, Christmas Story, Miracle on 34th Street, Bad Santa. Bad Santa. And then... Like, with honors has nothing to do with Christmas, but it's something I tend to watch around the holidays. I don't know why. It's with Brendan Fraser and Joe Pesci, I think. Um, And Trading Places. Kind of, you know, it's based around Christmas. Trading Places. Trading Places is such a good movie. What? I'm trying to think if I've seen it. That's what I'm going to say. Do you know what it is? It's a movie. I think I've heard of it. I don't think I've ever seen it. You know who's in it? No. Eddie Murphy. It's Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd is this crazy... I've definitely never seen it. Wall Street whatever. I don't know. Yeah, Wall Street whatever. Super rich guy. And Eddie Murphy is a poor dude, hustler on the street, whatever. Homeless type and so these two rich asshole brothers are like hey let's make a bet and see if we could flip flop these guys and make the homeless guy successful and see if we can ruin this guy's life and so that's what they do and it's the whole movie and it's Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy trading places and then Eddie Murphy becoming this you know debutante type dude it just like it's hysterical it's hysterical <laughs> And it came out right in the Eddie Murphy whirlwind of movies where he was just banger after banger after banger. You know, there's Beverly. It was like right before Beverly Hills Cop. I didn't know Eddie Murphy was that much of a banger. (laughs) Oh, well, then you never read about his scandal, sir. (laughs) Oh, And the final honorable mention, because it's not really a movie and it's not really a thing. I don't know what it is. Is The Grinch. I love The Grinch. Boris Karloff's The Grinch. Yeah. And even the other iterations are fine, too. I'll watch those with the kids. I'm going to say, they have the movie The Grinch. If you want it to be a movie, there's a movie The Grinch that 
exist. Yeah, but technically, it was a ma- oh, I guess I just answered my own question. It was a made-for-TV movie, but with all of the commercials cut out, it's like forty some minutes or twenty something minutes. But it was made for TV, so that's why it's all you know condensed and not like a real runtime. Yeah. All right. Well, Michael, it's been it's been a hundred. It's been a hundred. I'll say that. A hundred weeks is how long? That's like a year and a half. What? Oh no. My hundred weeks. It's only fifty two weeks in a year. We're one month yeah. It's November thirtieth. We're one month away from when we started. Two years what? ago. Oh yeah, so fifty-two four. weeks in a year, a hundred and four in oh, two shit. years. We're at a hundred. We got a month away. December. Damn. We started the very first episode we had. We record so a little inside baseball here. When we, <laughs> if you've made it this far and are gonna, continuing to listen, I was going to put that together eventually. So we didn't know what the hell we were doing. We started this thing, just like. Are we going to try and do this? Neither of us have had any speaking publicly or anything like Two that. Years. No, we don't have any producing or recording or audio. That We have no knowledge of any of this bullshit. We just were like, hey, man, are we going to do this thing? We decided, yes, we're going to do it. And so we recorded on Christmas Eve. I, I think we recorded on Christmas Eve. I tell the audience every week I smoke weed. Or December so 20. Okay, so but shit. it was December 22nd or December 24th of 2020. <laughs> and our first episode was coming out January 7th of 2021. But we had recorded it a week before the new year even came around. So I don't know if you know this, Mike. But there was something that happened on January 6th, 2021. Yeah. And then the very next day, we drop episode one. Yeah, you think anybody listened? Kind of. But retroactively. <laughs> so, hey, do us a favor. <laughs> Go back, pick <laughs> an episode, busy. start from scratch. Going back, trying to scrub up all the audio and make it better now that I kind of half know what I'm doing, but it's a process and there's a lot of other things going on, moving parts that I got to work with. So in the meantime, please follow us. Give us a share. Give us a follow. Give us some action. Jackson, comment, like, even a subscribe if you're feeling saucy. Um, Check us out wherever you podcast, even on YouTube if you want to look at Mike's shining face possibly no eyebrow having motherfucker soon enough um hey, I'm follow mike on instagram yeah yeah he is at black irish 213 i am at brendan mccorkle comedy we are at black irish pod give us some love tell somebody else about us brendan mccorkle what? comedy is the new ig yeah so follow me for comedy because i'm trying to do more comedy even though i'm kind of in a weird brain head rut right now but i'm still going out doing comedy so follow me go. where i'm going My i'll man, let you know Mr. comedian when i'm doing relevant shit it'll be on brendan mccorkle comedy i love you mike love you too my guy i'm gonna walk you your ass. Rest of the evening and why why end on such a violent negative note you're not gonna beat me anyway so now it's going to be even sound like bullshit come next week. I'm so sick of it. And with peace liars. and love, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and with too. peace and love. So that one, when I kick your ass, you can say, oh, it's called peace and love. Bro. Oh, go make my chili. I yeah, love you, my I guy. Love you too, my dude. Peace. <laughs>